Hey guys, I had this question in one of my comments and the person asked what is the time complexity of the following code? So here we have the code in the square. It says integer count equals zero for integer i equals n while i is greater than zero, i equals i divided by two. And then we have our inner loop um, for integer j equals zero while j is less than i, j increments by one each time. And then we have our count or counter variable here that increments by one each time. So first what we need to do to see what's going on with the um, inner loop is a few examples. So I'm gonna set my value n equal to four. And then I have enter here for inner loop to see how many times we go through this loop. And um, what we can do now, let's go ahead and, and run through the loop to see uh, how many times our inner loop runs. So i equals n, n equals four. Is four greater than zero? Yes. So we go to our inner loop here while integer j equals zero. While j is less than i, so zero is less than four. Then we're gonna go inside this loop here and then j is gonna increment by one. So right now j equals zero, let's say j equals zero. We go through there one time. So now j increments by one. So j equals one um, is one less than i, i is four, yes it is. So that's uh, two times, I'm just gonna put a little marker here for two. This is our j. So uh, now we go here, uh, j increments by one. So j becomes two, is two less than four, yes. So that's three times uh, that we're gonna go in here. Now j increments by one. So j becomes three, it's three less than i, i is four, yes it is. So that's four times, um, then j increments again to four, it's four less than four, no. So we're done with that and we go to our outer loop. So the first time that we ran through here was four times. So now our i value is gonna equal four divided by two, which is two, and our outer loop is gonna check is two greater than zero, yes it is. So our inner loop is gonna run two times going to run while j is less than 2 and it's going to increment by 1 each time. So it's going to run twice. So we get 2. So now our i variable becomes um, 2 divided by 2, which is 1. Is 1 greater than 0? Yes, it is. So we go to our inner loop and our inner loop is going to run one time. So our inner loop has run a total of 7 times and it took 1, 2, 3 k iterations. So k equals 3. So let's do another example here. n equals 8. Let's see how many times our inner loop runs. So first, i equals eight, eight greater than zero, yes it is. Our inner loop is gonna run eight times. And then i is gonna equal eight divided by two, which is four. Uh, it's four greater than zero, yes. Uh, so our inner loop is gonna run four times. And then i is gonna equal four divided by two, which is two, is two greater than zero, yes. So our inner loop is gonna run two times. And then i is gonna equal two divided by two, which is one, is one greater than zero, yes. So our, our um, loop is gonna run one time, and then we're gonna do is one divided by two greater than zero, no, is equal to zero, so we're done again. So now we get eight plus four plus two plus one, which is 15. Our end loop ran 15 times, and we had one, two, three, four k iterations, so k equals four. So hopefully you can see a pattern here. This means that our inner loop runs n times, right, because n equals eight here, n equals four here, plus n divided by two, this is eight divided by two, four divided by two, plus n divided by four, this is eight divided by four, this is four divided by four, plus n divided by eight, this is eight divided by eight. You'll notice that there's nothing here. Um, so depending on how large our value of n is, it's gonna continue. So I'm gonna put dot, 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 plus all the stuff in between, plus it's gonna finally stop when the when we get to the value one here, so plus one. And our k iterations is a question mark. So now we can actually write the time complexity as big O of n plus n divided by two plus n divided by four plus n divided by eight plus everything in between plus um, one. So this is equal to big O of n. So that would be the answer, and that is the answer to solve this time complexity, but we're gonna go on. We're gonna, I can see that this looks like a summation, and we're gonna try to, to see it as a summation and hopefully get that function of n there. So to do that, we have to do some manipulation. I'm gonna take out the value n, so we get n times one plus one half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus everything in between plus one over n. And we still don't know what that value k equals yet, right? 
Okay. So what we can do is we can write this out even more. I can see uh I can manipulate manipulate it a little bit more. So this is n times um, one over two to the power of zero plus one over two to the power of one plus one over two to the power of two plus one over two to the power of three plus everything in between plus one over two to the power of k minus one. Right? Because here I need I need eight divided by eight to equal one. I need four divided by four to equal one. Our k value equals four here, so that's one over two to the power of, I mean, that's eight divided by two to the power of three, which is equal to one. So that's one over two to the power of k minus one, which is four minus one, which is three, which is eight. So we need it one over eight. Here we need one over four. That's one over two to the power of two, so or one over two to the power of three minus one. So that's how I get the one over two to the k minus one. Okay, so let's rewrite this again. I can actually see a summation now. I mean, I can see the sums and hopefully we can write the summation. Okay, so this is gonna be equal to the summation from i equals zero to k minus one of n times 1 over 2 to the i. And this is perfect because there's actually a formula. So here I'm going to put note. And the formula is from i equals 0 to k minus 1 of a times r to the power of i is equal to a times one a times one minus um, r to the k all over one minus r while r does not equal one. Okay. So let's continue with our equation down here. Maybe I keep this up there. And let's rewrite this as this formula here. So our a equals n. So it's n times 1 minus 1 half to the power of k all over 1 minus 1 half. So this equals n times 1 minus 1 divided by 2 to the k, divided by 1 half. Okay, and this is equal to 2n times 1 minus 1 over 2 to the k. Okay, perfect. All right, and so let's write down over here. So 2n times 1 minus 1 over 2 to the k. This is big O of n. All right. Now, if you don't believe this, I still have one more trick for you. There's a summation formula. And I'm going to... Go ahead and erase all of that there. And this summation formula is from i equals 0 to infinity of a r i um, for or where the absolute value of r is less than 1. This is equal to, uh, put it here, equal to a over 1 minus r. Okay? So again, what we had was we had um, the summation from, you can see, from i equals 0 
of n times 1 over 2 to the i to k minus 1. But this time, let's say that uh, we have infinity. So now we can write it like this because our our r is a half, so it is, you know, a half is less than 1, so that checks out. So we can rewrite this, a equals n, so we get 1 minus our r is a half, so this is equal to n over 1 half, which equals 2n. And this, of course, is big O of n. So thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please leave likes, comments, questions. Uh, let me know if you see any mistakes. Uh, please subscribe and become a supporter on Patreon. Thank you guys and I'll see you all in the next video.